Okay, so, um, hello everybody. I'm sorry that I can't be there in person. I thought that my passport would be at the UK embassy, but it turns out I just got it back in the mail yesterday. So, um, I probably could have come, but I would have been incredibly stressed out waiting for the passport to come. But I hope that you're all having a wonderful time there. Um, I do have a few things to show you. Unfortunately, um, uh, with people leaving tomorrow um, and a couple of um, updates that still need to happen for the website. I can't show you all of the awesome and cool things that I wanted to, but I can at least tell you what updates we've done since we all met in Australia in July. Um, so by now you guys should know <laughs> pretty much this map by heart. Um, a few of the updates that happened were... Uh, You'll, you may notice some of the colors have changed. We finally hooked um, the colors of the map live into SIL's um, API, which means that now anytime um, SIL changes that, the information within that database, the colors on the map will change. So it's no longer static. It's now real time. It's still not hooked into progress uh, dot Bible, which is what Joan has been um, working on the last couple years. Um, we were still giving that time, wanted to let them really get their footing with it before we started messing around with all the back end of our website. Uh, I still need to talk with Joan and Min about it. I'd like to see it in the next six six to nine months, if if it's at all possible, because it'd be great to to see. Um, progress Bible being fed into this because it's probably a bit more accurate. Uh, some features that got added as well um, that we're still working on why why the server's uh, not working today for whatever reason, um, but we've added a few layers up top. Um, this red pins layer right here is going to be where there's any YWAM ships outreaches that have put their information into our system. Uh, so as soon as we get that up and running, any place that you see red pins will be where our YWAM ships have done medical outreaches. I'd like eventually to branch out to just anybody doing any end Bible poverty outreaches, but we're using YWAM ships as the guinea pigs. Uh, this blue icon is going to show wherever there's airports or airstrips in the Pacific. Um, even though I'm just zoomed into PNG Solomon Islands, everything, it's, it applies to the whole Pacific. And then finally, this little uh, green anchor pin is where there's ship ports. Um, a couple weeks ago, this was working beautifully, and you could see all the airports and all the ship ports up on the whole Pacific, and it was really, really gorgeous. Um, so I'm a little bit bummed that that uh, it's not working at this very moment. Please forgive me. Uh, that's just what happens, though, when we do technical presentations. It doesn't work. So uh, one last thing is we now have um, a login that will we'll give special permissions to a few select people that we know will upgrade, uh, update their information, and so um, people can start adding their own data to this website. Another thing that came up since we were last together, uh, when we were meeting in Melbourne, um, I was uh, it was during one of the sessions that I was really seeing <laughs> kind of our struggle of um, how our different organizations collect data and how we measure the end Bible poverty data, and we're not really measuring it according to what our goals are. So, for instance, I was seeing that uh, the way that we measure language is by translation progress. But uh, when we as Pacific Va'a are talking about ending Bible poverty, we're talking about going way beyond translation. We're talking all the way to engagement, and yet we don't measure that. So it was during those meetings um, that I, I kind of put two and two together and, and contacted a few different organizations Maybe some of you have heard about it, uh, but I, within a couple weeks of getting home, uh, created the Bible Poverty Index for everybody, um, mostly as an answer to YWAM's um, 
need for understanding Bible poverty status for a language uh, beyond translation, because many of you probably have figured out that we in YWAM are not really translators. We're really more get get the Bible in people's hands. Um, so so I created the Bible Poverty Index. There's a couple places that you can view it. Um, you can go through our 4kworldmap.com website, or I've got up here now the nbiblepovertynow.com website. And Bible Poverty Index, we're calling it BPI, so you can go to BPI Data. And uh, I took um, data from, like, I think I used, like, between six and nine different organizations' data to create the list. Uh, what it is is, just let it download there for a second, but what it is is it's it's basically looking at um, all of the steps that you take to get from this language doesn't have a Bible all the way to people are actually reading and engaging with the Bible. Um, so you can see right here, I hope, uh, let me just zoom in a little bit. So I've marked every language in the world on a scale of zero to four. Uh, anything marked as zero or red is, it's a language that doesn't have a Bible. If it's an orange uh, level one, it means that portions have been translated. Uh, for those of you in Seed Company or Wycliffe SIL, um, this is where you guys have like 14 different categories <laughs> in one in one category. I've, I've really consolidated it. Um, and I don't know how many people I've made upset with me, but, um, you know, that, that's okay. So all of that hard work that you do, I've, I've made it into one category. Please forgive me. Uh, next step, if a Bible has been uh, translated, either New Testament or full Bible, and it's been published, then it falls in the two category. If a Bible has been distributed it falls into the three category. And finally, if people are actually engaging with the word, then it's in the final category. Uh, a few disclaimers. First of all, um, as I was having conversations with the different organizations about this, uh, their biggest question was, how are you measuring distribution and engagement? Well, the answer is for this first round, um, not very well. So these categories right now are a bit incomplete. Even if you go down and look at all these, you're not going to see a lot of greens and blues. Um, the greens that you see are pretty much all represented by Jesus Film um, because they said uh, pretty much publication to distribution is seamless. So you can just count it. Um, I also mentioned, uh, also told those people that because YWAM is so heavily involved in the distribution and engagement categories, we're working on a way to be able to track how we're distributing and engaging languages um, with with the word. We are uh, creating an app within YWAM um, to send with our teams to go out and track by language and also not just by uh, 4K Omega Zone but down to the district and even the village level. Um, I don't know that we'll publicize that for everyone to see but it'll come back to me and I'll be able to measure it in our Bible Poverty Index and other maps and stuff like that. So for those of you wondering, categories three and four are a bit empty right now but um, I'm hoping to interact more with Bible societies and other um, sources of information to to uh, complete this. Um, the goal really, uh, you know, we of course always want for all of these red zero languages to end up um, in the translation category or even in the publication category. Uh, but what I tell people is really at the end of the day, we're trying to get everything into the blue. Um, so um, hopefully we can start uh, applying this to the Pacific as well. Uh, we introduced this to the YWAM Together event, global event in Kansas City in September. Um, so now people have access to this list. Even though this isn't Pacific related, um, people all around the world are now looking at this and trying to figure out where they need to go and what they need to do in their nation. Uh, some other ways that you can look at this is uh, 
going back to that website, we have the list that you could download. We have this interactive map, which is uh, connected to our Omega Zones. It gives you a nice little uh, instruction on how to work this. Um, but for now, what you can do is uh, click on an Omega Zone. You can zoom into the Pacific if you like. For the sake of time, I'll stick with Africa. Uh, but you can see the number of languages in that Omega Zone and then be able to uh, look to see what those languages are. Um, and there's all sorts of download capabilities in here as well. And then finally, for people who don't like lists and they don't like maps, we have these really nifty uh, infographics, which um, were put together super fast. Um, so just to show by Bible poverty status of what we have, um, as you can see, the green and the blue should probably be much higher for the whole world, but um, we're working on it. Uh, and you can go through and find your region and click around, have some fun with it. Um, I'll just... You can view it so, as you can see, uh, the most languages in the world is Papua New Guinea. You can see by its color code how much work still needs to be done. Um, so lots has been published, but we're not quite sure how much has been distributed or even if they're reading it. Uh, hopefully, um, in the future, we'll be able to, to fill these in. But I'm, I'm really hoping that you're seeing the potential of it, um, not just the holes. I think the potential of it is really going to um, change the landscape of, of measuring how people engage with the Word of God, really from the start to finish of Bible engagement. So I just wanted to show you guys that because uh, it affects Pacific Va'a, um, but also it came about from Pacific Va'a meetings last, last July. So thank you for that. Um, thank you so much for giving me even more work to do over the next few years. Really, really appreciate that. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Um, I'm sorry I didn't have more to show you in the way of this lovely map. When it was working uh, just a little while ago, it was really exciting and really, really beautiful. Um, so you'll just have to take my word for it. It's very smooth. Min Sung and his developer in Korea have just been doing a tremendous job um, uh, perfecting this and, and I was really, really excited when I saw the first round that they sent me. Um, hopefully even by the time you guys are listening to this, it's in another week from now. Um, hopefully those little, um, bugs will be fixed and, and you'll be able to go and turn on the airports and the ship ports. And, and if anybody wants access to the login, let me know. And yeah, so thank you. And I really pray that you have an incredible um, rest of your time together, and yeah, enjoy the week. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to this update, and I am certainly praying for you guys as, as you're all together um, meeting to, you know, save the world and stuff. So thank you, and have a good rest of your week. Bye. Okay, so um, hello everybody. I'm sorry that I can't be there in person. I thought that my passport would be at the UK.